All right, this is the shutter from a Retina 3C, and uh, I'm just going to strip this down for cleaning. So I thought I'd show you how I go about it. So first, the lens, just bayonets in the front component. I'll remove the retainer ring that I put back on here for safekeeping after I'd taken it off the camera. There are the shims on the back of the shutter. The shims are there to adjust this particular lens and shutter set to the camera body. The camera bodies were probably assembled in the factory with the rangefinder. Everything set so the rangefinder was set correctly at the infinity mark. And the lens and shutters were probably fitted last of all. There would have been some variation between individual shutter sets. Um, and the shims just allow to adjust for that. That last shim is really reluctant to come off. It's because it's oily and it's just glued down. So I'll remove that lens for better access. That just unscrews. You can do it with your fingers. Let's see if I can get under this shim now. Yeah, there it is. So it's just steel, quite bright and very oily. All right. The outer shutter case is held on with three screws. One, two, three. I'll just remove those. The flash sink here is a plastic clamp really that holds the contact to the wire and that's held tight with a screw from the side here. It only needs a part turn to free that up and the outer case should come off. That's the curved rack that cocks the shutter. That's the pusher that the curved rack pushes around. And I'll put my loose components into a bin here. That'll do for the back of the shutter for the moment. There's a single screw here that locks that retaining ring. It's a bit devoid of paint so I know someone's been at it before. I'll just tip that straight into that container. I feel a bit of play on those front rings so that tells me that someone has uh, not quite tightened that up correctly when they're putting it back together. You can use a toothpick to move that ring or in this case I'm using the plastic shaft from a uh, cotton bud or a q-tip for you. Americans. So that retaining ring can come off. The front rings will come off together. There's two components here. The shutter speed setting ring. That couples to the setting cam here, and it hooks on there and there. This little insert in it, that tab connects to the diaphragm setting there. This little ring with the numbers on it, that just transfers your settings or shows serves to show you the numbers for your aperture settings at the top of the shutter 
so it's coupled to that setting. And this piece, the front component, this is the mount for the lens. This is where the lens bayonet's in. And uh, there's the, the number plate on it. The serial number should match the lens, the, both the front element and the rear element. And uh, looks fairly promising, so that's all good. Here we go then. This little latch here, that stops the shutter release from being depressed if the sh shutter isn't actually cocked. When the shutter's cocked, this swings out of the way and allows you to fire the, release the shutter. So this can come off its post. The main drive gear there, that drives the main cam. It's driven in turn by this ring, the cocking ring. And the cocking ring, that, that revolves with the cock as you cock the shutter. It turns that, that little cam, that little cam in turn drives the main cam here and latches it into position. All right. Here's the main drive spring. I'll just unhook that from its post. It's a little bit tired. It's um, if that's twelve o'clock, that's sort of about half past three. That's getting a bit. That's doable. That's okay. If that's a bit tired, it means that. The fastest speed in particular may be a bit short, but of course there are no new parts for cameras this old. Lift out that drive cam. Lift out the trigger. I'll just swing that across to cock it. Take some of the tension off this spring here and unhook that spring. The spring's doing its best to hide. There it is. Be very careful with springs. They, uh, it's their nature to, they're only vaguely house trained and they will try and escape whenever they get the opportunity. That can come off, the flash terminal can come off. I'll just hold back that little tab there which releases the tension on this component. I'll lift off this piece. also drives the flash contact use some pliers here to pull, pull that spring loose oh it's reluctant that's better that can come off that arm drives the pallet wheel and the pallet wheel revolves against these pallets here and that gives you the delay the delay in releasing the shutter after the flash is fired if you have it set to use bulb flash flash bulbs take a certain amount of time to come up to speed and so typically you fired them earlier so they got up to peak brilliance by the time the shutter was fully opened so I'm unhooking a little spring there. That's quite fine, easily lost. And like most springs, it wants to get away. To make sure you don't let it. I'll remove this screw which holds the B lever in place. That has a spring on it. The spring acts against that post there. There's the B lever. The B lever has its own spring. It's 
bits here hooked over that post. Another fine spring, another one that's keen to get away. This is the delay action or self timer held in with a single screw. This is the retard gear train held in with two screws. So far so good. That's pretty much all that needs to come off the top of the shutter at this stage. We have three screws here which hold this diaphragm setting ring and that screw was loose. Cameras are often a mixture of screws which are too tight and too loose. Much easier to deal with if they're too loose, of course. This ring sets the self timer pulls the self timer with that post there also sets the flash sync speed all right so here's the shutter case we can remove that three screws the countersunk screws or flathead screws depending on what they call them in your neck of the woods Here's the case, this is the, the diaphragm components, they're a bit oily. If they get very oily, particularly in cold weather, they'll stick together. And if you force the setting, when those blades are stuck together, they'll get deformed. If they deform far enough, they'll get damaged, because either they will bend completely out of shape and not really want to slide over each other ever again or they will you can actually tear tear the little rivet posts off them they act as pivots they can be torn off them completely so there's the outer case which will need to be cleaned the cover plate this is the piece that revolves as it revolves it swings the blades in and out and there we have the five diaphragm blades. I'm looking closely at the reflection and the light here to see what happens. If they've been deformed, you'll see that they don't, they're not quite flat. They pull up, particularly around the rivet holes. They'll be okay. Here are your shutter blades. There are five shutter blades. Unlike the diaphragm blades, the shutter blades are laid just one on top of each other. This is You can tell this is oily. Look at them. They're stuck there. Holding up, holding up against gravity. They should have just dropped out, of course. They're stuck together with oil. That's what oil does to fine, highly polished articles. They'll need to be cleaned. And we're down here to the mechanism plate. I didn't need to attack that screw. I'll have to go back and... Um, Set that. Oh, one, two, three, four, 
great. That little plate holds the end of the main drive spring. Now the screws are slightly different in length. That's one of the shorter screws, that's the longest screw. There's about a millimetre in it. I want to get them mixed up. The longer one of course goes through that bracket. Right, we've got the whole shutter taken apart now. All these components will be cleaned. We'll lubricate as necessary. Adjust the timing. And that will be the job done. Thank you for watching.